Hi guys, it's Paula and I hope you are doing well. We are halfway through the panning games. Holy cow, that is crazy. The Panning Games is a Pantastic Ladies collaboration. It started on August 1st of 2018 and will be going to August 1st of 2019. The entire premise of this project was to choose 24 items from a box of 50 items within 30 seconds and pan those 24 items for the next year. This project was created by Amber M. She is a fantastic lady. And of course, my little twist on this project was not to pan 24 items, but to work on 24 eyeshadow palettes that had never been touched before, with the only goal of using them at least once during the month. So far, I've been able to manage accomplishing that small goal, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been really nice getting to know some of these palettes that have never been used before in my stash. I have so many. And for the last month, I had these two palettes to work on. First of all, I had the Ulta Beauty Metals palette, which looks like this. And the Nubian by Juvia's Place. This is their original palette, and it looks like this, Warm Neutrals. The Nubian is what I have on my eyes right now. I asked in the last video if any of you guys would like to see me doing like an eyeshadow application as part of this update and a couple of you said yes, so I decided to throw that in as well. So if you're interested in that, it will be at the end of the video. Let's get back to the Ulta Beauty palette. Just looking at this palette, I wasn't feeling extremely inspired and I wasn't exactly sure why. After having this in rotation for the last month, I think I figured out why. Pretty much all of these shadows have at least some level of shimmer. The black might be the closest thing to a matte, but the rest are all shimmery. And although a lot of these could make a decent one shadow look, I don't think I look at this palette and see creative eye looks. I see one shadow looks. And also, I wasn't too sure about how the quality of these shadows would be because I've never used this palette before and I was worried that the quality might not be good. In the end, I only used one shadow in this palette, but I used it for like a week straight because I absolutely loved it. And you're not gonna believe what it is, the purple, yes. I've been painting purple for the month of January, so that purple shadow fit in perfectly. I used it right in my crease um, before I started applying my lid shade, and it was pigmented, it was beautiful. I have the slightest, tiniest dip going on, and um, I'm kind of proud of that, because I don't know how that happened. I've also, we had a chance to look at this palette some more and although there's still some shades in here that don't necessarily appeal to me there's others that look really stunning like this shade called crown right here is really gorgeous and it doesn't stand out amongst these other jewel tone shades but it is a gorgeous like cool toned taupey gold and it is beautiful also the shade honor right here is like a warm silver and I love when those metallic shades pull like opposite to what you'd think like a silver that pulls warm and a gold that pulls cool I love that combination so although I am sorry I didn't get to use more shades in this palette I love this purple shade and I'm glad I was able to use it so many times during the month and incorporate it into looks for the Nubian I used many of the eyeshadows in this palette, but I only used them twice. So it's kind of the opposite. I used the Ulta Beauty one many times, but I only used one shadow. I used many of the shadows in this palette, but I only used them twice. And when I did use this palette, I pulled toward the orangey shades more so than these golden shades. Because I was panning purple so much during the month of January. When I got sick of purple, I went to orange. Like I wanted to go the exact opposite of on the color wheel and just completely change it up and get that purple out of my system. And after one day of an orangey look, I was ready to go back to the purple. So it was perfect. The shade up here is stunning. It is a foiled shade. You just apply it with your finger and it looks like metal. It's what's on the inner half of my eyelid. 
and it is amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, I have a lot of Juvia's Place palettes, and some of them are almost so pigmented, they are intimidating, and that's how they're meant to be. These, this entire brand was created by a woman of color for women of color, and part of what helps women with deeper skin tones is a very pigmented eyeshadow. So that's the whole point of these eyeshadows, is to be very pigmented. But of course, on my skin tone, it can get carried away, and I've done that before. I have used a Juvia's Place eyeshadow, and it just got away from me, and I I wore it, but I really shouldn't have. Like I should have just washed my face and started over, but I just rocked that crazy look all day long. This palette, I feel, was a little bit more manageable and a little bit more foolproof. Um, and part of that's just because these are neutral shades that even if you go overboard, it's still a neutral look. So, you know, it's one thing to take a deep green and go overboard. It's another thing to take a beautiful golden shade or an orangey shade and go overboard. You really can't. So if you have never tried Juvia's Place before, this is a great place to start if you like warm neutral shadows. Um, because like I said, some of their colorful, more vibrant shades, their reds, their blues, their greens are really, it takes a little bit of restraint to use them because if you just go all in, it's going to get out of here. I loved using this palette. I would love to use it again real soon. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm glad I was able to finally kind of play around with these shadows. As much as I love them because it's such a neutral, easy palette, it was easy to just not use, you know? So yes, I wish, of course, I could have played around with this more than two times, but I'm glad I have two uses under my belt with this palette now. So let's talk about my two palettes for February. I love pink eyeshadow. I wear pink eyeshadow all the time. I will wear it 12 months out of the year. There's not a specific time where I will wear pink eyeshadow and then that's it. But there is a month where I wear pink eyeshadow even more often than I normally wear pink eyeshadow. And that is of course February because everything is pink and red and it just is so inspiring, especially since I work in a school like there's hearts everywhere. Like the kids work, the teachers do some amazing like little activities with the kids. The whole school is just covered in pink and red and it's just, it's really inspiring and I wanna wear pink eyeshadow all month long. So I've prepared for that. I have picked two palettes that I think will lend themselves to pink eye looks as I see fit during the month. The first one is a ColourPop palette that I've never used before obviously. And it is the element of surprise palette. I know a lot of people receive this palette in a BoxyCharm. I'm not subscribed to BoxyCharm. I actually just bought this because I thought it was pretty. And I think it was on sale and I like to hoard ColourPop. If you haven't seen it, this is what it looks like. This is a duochrome shadow up here. There's a pink. There's another kind of duochrome shadow. It looks kind of like there's an aqua shift, but it's quite lavender. So it shifts from like aqua to lavender. There's some nice neutral shadows, but yes. Um, I think this is the perfect eyeshadow palette for February and I'd like to get some use out of it. I have swatched it, so they're not quite as brand new as some of my other palettes, but I've never put these on my eyeballs and I'm looking forward to it. The second eyeshadow I decided to pull out of the 24 that I pulled from the intro of this challenge is the original Carly Bible palette in collaboration with BH Cosmetics. Maybe I should have said that the other way. The original BH Cosmetics Carly Bible palette and it looks like this. So there's some nice kind of rosy pink shadows up here that I thought would be perfect for the month of February. I have seen a few people pan this palette and they all seem to love this palette, even when they're panning it. And I find that very inspiring because when I look at this palette, I just kind of think, eh, like kind of the same way I felt about the Nubian. It's... It's a great neutral palette, it's lovely, but it doesn't like 
draw me in. Like in this element of surprise palette, there are colors that draw me in and I want to play with them. I don't really get that from this, but everybody who pans this palette absolutely loves it. So I'd like to play around with it and get some use out of these rosier shades during the month of February and maybe some of the other ones. Yes. So I met my goal of using my two palettes at least one time during the month of January and I've chosen two new palettes for February. I am definitely looking forward to trying to incorporate these shadows into my eye looks throughout the month and getting as much use out of them as possible, but at least using them one time. I am going to include the clip of this eye look next, so if you are interested in seeing that, you can stay tuned and watch that. Okay, so the eye look I'm going to be doing today is using the Nubian. It looks like this on the inside. Very beautiful, warm neutral palette. I know that some will say that warm neutrals have had their time in the spotlight, but I'm still in love with this color scheme and I think it's gorgeous. So this is going to be the palette I use for today's eye look. Now this could certainly stand alone this palette could absolutely stand alone. But of course, I'm gonna add in a bunch of other eyeshadow because I'm a project panner and I still gotta pan some stuff. So I am going to start with the shade in my Morphe palette that I am trying to hit pan on in my pan in every palette. That is this shade right here. I'm gonna start working that into my crease up to my brow bone. I certainly feel like I could have accomplished the same goal with this shadow right here but again i'm panning this shadow so i'm going to use it i have six palettes in front of me and only one of them has a mirror in it i never cared about that until i started making videos and now it's a thing so i'm going to start with that shadow in the morphe palette and i actually have a morphe m433 brush so that's just a coincidence and i'm going to start by scooting in and working that shadow into my crease. Okay, lovely. Done with the Morphe palette. Now we're gonna go into the Nubian and I'm going to take, I think I'm gonna go in with that same shade anyways, this one right here. It's just a little bit deeper and so I'm gonna add that one in next. A Little bit warmer too. Okay, I am going to go in next with the shadow right under it, this beautiful orangey red, bronzy, coppery goodness right there. And that's going kind of on my outer third of my eyelid and a little bit into my crease. Same brush, because I can't be bothered. Okay, I'm really happy with that. I'm gonna switch gears to a pencil brush. I'm going to take, mm, mm, probably this warm matte brown shadow down here and kind of line my lashes with it and deepen up my outer V. Okay. 
Okay, it's time to lay some shadow down on the inner half of my eyelid. I'm a little bit torn about which of the two lightest shades to use. I think when I used this palette last time, I used this shade. So I'm leaning towards this one, but it looks just a little less impactful. I'm going to put something on top of it anyways. Let me do swatches and see what the swatches tell me. This is a very soft formula. Ooh. Yes. The one that looks more foiled is definitely more foiled. This bottom one will make a lovely brow bone highlight. It's got a little bit of a pink shift in it, whereas the one above it is a straight like golden champagne shade. I'm gonna go in with the golden champagne shade, which is this more foiled looking one right there. And I'm just going to apply that shadow on the inner half of my eyelid using my fingers. I hear somebody creeping around upstairs. Hey, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna add that other shade that I said would be good for a brow bone highlight onto my brow bone. I was going to use something else, but. I changed my mind. I can definitely see the pink shift in the mirror. Is it, I don't think it's showing up as much on camera. All right, for my lower lash line, if I was just using this palette, I'd probably throw in this red shade or this shade right here. I, honestly, any of them would work as a wonderful lower lash line shade, this one. But again, I'm a project panner, so I gotta keep panning. So I'm gonna use Makeup Geek's Cocoa Bear. It is in my little extra palette that I'm using for the experiment. And I'm gonna throw that on my lower lash line. And mm, Coco Bear is the shadow right in the middle up here. Done. I was going to add on this Stila Glitter and Glow in the shade Kitten on top, but I don't think I need it at all. I'm gonna do liner and lashes, well, liner and mascara off camera, but I did wanna show you one. That was a nice run. I did wanna apply my ABH Liquid Gold, is that what it's called? Yes, Metallic Luster Liner. I just wanted to show you how I apply this on my lower lash line so you could see it in action. All right, so that is it. It just adds a little bit of brightness to my lower lash line and my inner corner. So I am going to go ahead and add liner and lashes, mascara, and I will be right back to show you the finished look. Okay, so this is the finished look. I think it is beautiful, warm, neutral. I don't know. 
I don't know what more to say. It is simple. I would wear this every day and feel very confident and comfortable. It's nothing fancy. There's nothing special, but it's nice. Um, can you guys tell that my lashes are growing? I've been taking that lash serum for like six weeks now. And I can see it, but I don't know if anybody else can. They're definitely getting longer. Can you see it now? Anyways, on my lips, I have this Mally lip color in Summer Peach. This is in my lip gloss, like current rotation for trying on. So I thought I'd try it on. It's almost like a liquid lipstick. It is very pigmented, very opaque, very lovely. Okay, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.